Hey, welcome to Binge Bar. The NHL trade deadline is now officially over, and today we're going to talk about some of the biggest trades that we've seen. Now, going into this, we all thought the Columbus Blue Jackets were going to be sellers and not buyers. We all thought they were going to trade Artemi Panarin and Sergei Bobrovsky. But instead of doing so, they risk the chance of losing them now in the offseason as they keep them and try to go for a deep playoff run. See, Columbus knows that their time in the spotlight is about to end if they lose these guys. So instead of trading them away, what they did is they traded away many of their picks and prospects to three teams. Three of these teams being the New York Rangers, the New Jersey Devils, and the biggest one being the Ottawa Senators. It was a fair trade made between the Columbus Blue Jackets and the New York Rangers, which earned the Blue Jackets the hard-hitting defenseman Adam Quaid. They then went on to straight up fleece the New Jersey Devils into acquiring Keith Kincaid with only a fifth-round pick. Kincaid will serve as a great backup to Sergei Bobrovsky in the playoffs, and I don't know any team that wants to go up and face that. The Jackets then went on to make two trades with the Ottawa Senators. They traded away various picks and prospects along with Anthony Duclair, for Ryan Dezingle and perhaps the biggest name of this year's trade deadline, Matt Duchesne. The Jackets are simply loading up for the Cup this year because they know if they don't, they're going to be in big trouble. And the Alamo Senators have made multiple trades, so you think they'd be done, right? No! They made another trade at the deadline by dealing away Mark Stone to the Vegas Golden Knight. This was one of, if not the biggest trade made yesterday by any team. And if you ask me, the Senators won this one. The reason I say this is because the Vegas Golden Knights were able to part ways with Eric Brandstrom, Oscar Lindbergh, and a second rounder. Now, if you don't understand why this is such a big deal, I'll explain that. Eric Brandstrom is an elite puck-moving defenseman, and if you ask me, he's one of the best prospects a team can have. And if the Senators are really looking at doing a rebuild, this could be perfect to build a team around it. It's been noted that Brandstrom plays a very similar game to Eric Carlson. Now, after losing Carlson and having a line with Shabbat and Brandstrom on it, that could be tremendous for the franchise. Since the Chris Kunitz goal, the Ottawa Senators have been nothing of a dumpster fire. But all I'm saying is just wait five years. There'll be something to watch out for. Detroit then made an interesting trade. They traded away Gustav Nyquist to the San Jose Sharks. Their GM was also just able to acquire Eric Carlson and Evander Kane. So the fact that he's able to bring in Nyquist now is really making them look like they have a shot at the cup. Detroit let Nyquist go for only a second and third round pick. And it doesn't end there. It gets even worse as they said they're also going to retain 30% of his salary. Last year at the deadline, the New York Rangers traded away Ryan McDonough and JT Miller to the Tampa Bay Lightning, along with fan favorite Rick Nash to the Boston Bruins. This is all supposed to be part of some fan crippling, Lundquist breaking rebuild that they're going through, but it doesn't end there as they were very active at this year's trade deadline. Henrik, we saw your uh, tweet, your Instagram about Matt. Uh, after spending nearly a decade with him, now that he is officially on Dallas, just a word on, on what he's meant to you. Uh, on and off the ice and what he's meant to this team. Um. <clears throat> it's tough. Good friend. The Dallas Stars were actually able to acquire Matt Zuccarello from the Rangers for only a second and third round pick, sealing the coffin for any New York Rangers fans. Obviously, this is devastating for any New York Rangers fans, but some good news is that Zuccarello went on to score his first goal with his first team that following night in Dallas. The bad news is he ended up breaking his arm and is looking to miss the rest of the season. On top of that, the Stars captain Jamie Benn also got injured, but isn't that the most Stars thing that could possibly happen? The Stars are a strong team though, and they're a good team, even minus these two players, so I think they'll bounce back and they'll still make the playoff. And if you think the Rangers fans haven't gone through enough yet, shortly after trading away Matt Zuccarello, they then decide to trade away Kevin Hayes to the Winnipeg Jets. What sucks about this is that they were able to actually get more for Kevin Hayes than they were for Matt Zuccarello, and that's kind of an insult to the fans and even the players on that team. But the good news is they were able to get back a first round pick and Brendan Lemieux from the Jets. Now, for those of you that don't know, I cannot stress enough how good Lemieux is and how much he'll be missed in Winnipeg. He's such a strong player and he's a smart player and I think he's going to be a great addition towards the Rangers and their rebuild. That being said though, even though it's a first round pick, it's coming from the Winnipeg Jets. And with their success, that first round pick is looking more like an early second round pick. But the Jets weren't done there. They also went on to make various moves yesterday to really help out their blue line. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Morrissey, Morrow, and uh, Dustin Bufflin are also all injured. So acquiring a couple D-men has to be huge for them. Because again, they're another team like the Stars, but they're very talented, very smart, and very strong. And they do have a shot at the playoffs as they're one of the best teams in the league right now. But losing those D-men could really cripple the team. But there's so many goal scorers on that team that hopefully the goods can outweigh the negatives there and it's not a shot here. Because I've been saying from day one, this is the Jets here. They're winning the cup. After a series of great trades made by Winnipeg yesterday, they made the icing on the cake trade, which would be acquiring Matt Hendricks. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, Hendricks is a fan favorite of Winnipeg and the fans absolutely love him. And if you look in the comments and on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and Reddit, they all say that their favorite trade of the day would be bringing home Hendricks. 
because he's a fan favorite and everybody just absolutely loves him and they were able to get him back for only a seventh round pick. A slightly smaller trade that was made yesterday was the Derek Broussard trade. Now Broussard has been on five teams in his whole career and four of these have been in the last 12 months. With that being said, uh, the Colorado Avalanche was able to acquire Derek Broussard from the Florida Panthers for only a third rounder. Now that might seem like a steal, but Broussard has been kind of hit or miss these last two years. He's been a little streaky. So I think for both teams, this is a great trade as the Avalanche are looking to go deep in the playoffs this year and even have a shot at the Cup. Broussard could be a great third line center for them. To everyone's surprise, the Nashville Predators were actually quite active yesterday as they traded away Kevin Fiala to the Minnesota Wild for Michael Granlund. Now to me, that's a very fair trade because both of these players are rising and are both having fantastic years. So I think just the switch up of the teams and the chemistry, I think that could be good for both players and both teams. And after that, Ryan Hartman and a couple picks were sent to Philadelphia for Wayne Simmons. Personally, in my own opinion, I absolutely despise Wayne Simmons, so I am very happy to get him out of the Metropolitan Division, which if you can't see, that's where I'm from, and I absolutely disgust that guy. I hate him, and I'm happy to see him gone, because I'm hoping we don't have to first him in the first couple rounds of the playoffs, and if we do, it's going to be the Stanley Cup Final, which I'll be even content with getting today. And then a very confused Pittsburgh stepped in and made a couple strange trades. They traded away Tanner Pearson for uh, Erica Branson of the Vancouver Canucks. Now, I know the Canucks fans absolutely hate Good Branson, but you gotta look a couple years ago to when the Penguins were able to acquire from the Oilers, Justin Schultz. You hated Schultz there, and look what happened when he got to Pittsburgh. If you're a Pittsburgh fan, you all love Justin Schultz, so we're really hoping that's the result you guys get with Eric Good Branson. He's a great addition to the blue line, and due to the injuries and the plague of Jack Johnson that he is, and the slowness of Olimata, Hopefully this is going to really help you guys and you guys will be able to go deep in the playoff. Sadly for Pittsburgh Penguins fans, they then went on to trade Gene Sebastian Dia to the Florida Panthers for Chris Weidman. Now, Dia was never going to play. There's, you have Wilson, you have Austin Reese, you have Simone, you have Teddy Bluger, you got Ricola, and even though he's a defenseman, I'm just throwing them in there. You don't have the best youth system, you don't have the best prospect pool going on there. And with those players that have been playing now, Dia is never going to have a shot in Pittsburgh. So I think it's a good change of scenery for him. And you guys were able to get Weidman back in return. And Weidman, again, he's another blue line guy. And that's what you guys need right now. So overall, I would actually say that's a steal for Pittsburgh. When Washington eliminated Pittsburgh last year in the playoffs, they've looked shaky ever since. They've made a series of trades this year and in the offseason. And hopefully this is what they needed. They've looked very shaky. And I think maybe this could be the change that they need. And the Bruins actually made the trade yesterday, and because of that, Marcus Johansson is going to the Bruins. And he was great on the Devils, but everybody knew they were going to trade him. But good news for the Devils, they, uh, in return, they received a second and fourth rounder. Now, both teams are kind of unhappy and happy at the same time about this. They don't know how to feel about this. But uh, I think overall it's a good trade, and I think it's really going to help both teams. Johansson's really a great guy, and everyone's really looking to see him play in the playoffs this year. And I think he's going to be a great addition on the Bruins, and it's really just going to work well. And before we wrap all this up, the last thing I want to talk about is the defending Stanley Cup champions, the Washington Capitals, and the two trades they made last week. They decided to waive Devontae smith pelly They then went on to make a trade with the Los Angeles Kings, trading away a couple picks for Carl Hagelin. Now, for those Capitals fans that don't know this, Carl Hagelin is one of the fastest players. He's The hustle is unreal, and he's hardworking and determined every night. The fight in him never dies, and I know fans in Pittsburgh will always miss him, especially because they traded him away for Tanner Pearson, and then they traded Pearson away for Good Branson, and that's just that's just got to be the worst thing to go through, losing him for just about um, Hagelin for Good Branson. That, that, that would be a horrible trade, and virtually that's what ended up happening. But back to the Capitals, he's going to be a great addition in the playoffs. He's fast, he's smart, he's strong, and he's determined. And the determination that Carl Hagelin possesses is going to go great for the team. And I know he's been struggling these past two years, but you got to see him in the playoffs. He's fantastic, and you guys are going to absolutely love him. And then right after the confusion of this trade, the Caps made, in my opinion, the worst trade any team made this year. And that was trading away Madison Bowie and a second-round pick to Detroit for Nick Jensen and a fifth-round pick. Now, maybe it's just me, but I don't understand this one. And if I was a Capitals fan, I would not like this one. Madison Bowie is great, and he's young, and you trade him away for Nick Jensen in a fifth, and plus you throw in a second in there, it's, it's belittling, and it's horrible for the fans to see, and I just really don't understand it. For Detroit, on the other hand, this is great. You guys are going to absolutely love Madison Bowie. He's one of my favorite players of the Washington Capitals, and I, it's an absolute steal for you guys. And real quick, just before we end this video, I would like to take a second to thank everybody that's watching. Uh, recently, the support we've got on this channel has been tremendous, and even though we're still growing, we really appreciate every one of you, the likes, the comments, and just the sharing of our videos and getting our name out there really means a lot to us, so thank you guys. And again, if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more content. Thank you. We'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content. Thank you. We'll see you next time.